So next we are going to do a stack, which I think is perhaps the most straightforward of the ADTs that you need to learn. Uh, so what does a stack look like? Um, we've essentially got items again in a linear fashion. So rather than the queue, which we visualize from left to right, we would visualize a stack uh, kind of vertically. And contrary to what Cambridge International say, um, I think you really do only need one pointer. Um, and the pointer is the, the top pointer. So something that points to the top of the stack. Right now, we're actually in a situation where there's nothing in the stack. So the top pointer would actually point to null. As soon as we add some, um, add some data, then we just increment the top pointer by one. The only other item of data we need to make sure that the, the algorithms work is um, we need to know the size of the stack to make sure that if the top pointer um, goes above the, the size of the stack, then we know that we cannot um, add any more items. So let's try this again. So um, we're going to push. So the operation to add something to a stack is the push operation. So we push burger onto the stack and the top pointer increments. Um, the free pointer is always just the one above the top pointer. So there's no need to represent the free pointer separately. Um, let's add sushi. So again, top pointer gets incremented. Let's go healthy. Let's add some salad. Again, top pointer incremented. Please forgive my atrocious Microsoft Paint diagrams. One more thing, uh, what else can we do? Uh, noodles and the top point that gets incremented. So now the condition would be we can't add anything else because the top pointer is um, equal to the size of the stack minus one. So if the size of the stack is five, the top pointer is now four. So that represents the, the stack being full. So we can't push anything. Like we did before, let's uh, write a procedure that uh, tracks with global variables. So stack, which is the array of items, and top pointer. Let's make size a constant, and this time let's choose five items. And stack is uh, an array of strings, so maybe let's use empty strings for item range size. And the top pointer, the default state of the top pointer is um, so interesting enough, we're going to use uh, minus one in this case. This is because every time we push from the stack, um, we're just going to decrement the top pointer down. And this makes sense for when we're in this situation where there's only just one item left on the stack. Because if we decrement at this point and then the top pointer goes down and becomes minus one, it's already the null pointer without having to make some additional check to set it to Python's non-type or something. So let's code the push operation. And the first thing that we need to check is that the stack is not full. As I mentioned before, the stack is full when the top pointer is at the top. Therefore, it's equal to whatever the size of the stack is, minus one. Um, so first of all, we need to globalize this top pointer. Let's do the stack as well to be consistent. Um, we, so we want to say that if the top pointer is equal to the size of the stack minus one, then this means stack is full. But otherwise, we should be able to add the new thing to the stack, right? So let's take the top pointer and increment it by one. And then let's add the new item to the position that's now specified by the top pointer. Maybe let's just print the stack for testing purposes. So let's just check if the push operation is working. Push. Oops, probably need to create a queue first. And then push pizza. And let's push cheese. Uh, and push salad. And push noodles. Push. Burger, 
And now once we try and push sushi, we should get that stack is full error. Um, obviously, we only need to do these actions if that condition is not true. So let's add an else clause there. All right, let's code the pop operation. So when we pop from the stack, first of all, we need to check that the stack is not empty. So if the top pointer is minus one, which is what we're using for null at this case, um, then we need to say that the stack is empty. But if it's not, then um, what can we do? We can make an item. So let's make an item pop stack at the top pointer. And then we, similar with the queue, we want to overwrite that value. Uh, let's just make it an empty string that time, this time, um, print. Um, popped was popped from the stack. Um, and then obviously we need to decrement the top point to update the state. And then that's it. So stack is very simple. Uh, Let's just do some tests to make sure it works. Tests. Again, let's make a list of four food in foods, pizza, burger, salad, chocolate. I uh, can't think of any foods. Noodles, pasta, curry, sushi. Can't be enough. Let's, um, let's all push each food. And then let's uh, maybe pop a couple of times and push another food, eggs, and then let's pop. Let's see if everything works as expected. Before we do that, let's just check that we can't, um, we shouldn't be able to pop if the stack is empty. So this should generate our stack is empty error. So let's run that again and create the stack. I feel like I might have said Q a few times. Let's create the stack. Oh, I've even called it create queue. <laughs> Did you spot that? So let's call it, let's call create stack. And um, let's uh, run the test and let's see. So the stack is empty, so we couldn't pop. And then each thing got added until the stack got full. We couldn't add uh, pasta, curry, or sushi. And then noodles was at the top, so that got popped. Then chocolate got popped. Then salad got popped. And then there was some free space, so we could push eggs onto the stack. And finally, eggs got popped because it was at the top of the stack. So hopefully this helps to explain the stack ADT as taught in the A-level syllabus.